Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is the eighth tutorial in this course and in this tutorial we are going to talk about data type conversion in Python and uh, we use built-in methods to convert values from one data type to another, right? And uh, when we convert an object from a data type to another, uh, a new object is created and the older one exists in the memory till the time you don't restart your shell or shut your shell, right? So we're gonna check out a few built-in methods, the popular ones that you might be using in the course, uh, in this course, as well as, you know, if you program, if you make applications in Python, then you might find some of these built-in methods handy, right? So um, the first method that we're gonna see is to convert a float value to an integer value, right? And the method that you use is the int method. And then the, the way you use it is you type int, and then within parentheses, you type in a float value, the value that you want to convert to, uh, you know, its corresponding integer value. So I'll type in 55.89. And when I press the enter key, I see that, uh, you know, the output is just 55, right? So the uh, decimal part or the fractional part has been removed from the number and I just see the whole number value, right? And uh, the next method that we're gonna check out is the float method. And this method is used to convert an integer value to a float value. So let's say I pass 36, which is an integer value as an argument to this function. And I press the enter key, I see 36.0. So it cannot add any random number, like, you know, it cannot convert it to 36.13 because, you know, that'll be um, stupid. So, you know, it's not gonna do that. It's just going to add zero and a decimal point to make it a float value, right? And uh, then let's say you want to convert an integer value to a string value. The method that you use is um, str method, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a string variable my underscore string and uh, then i'll type in the assignment operator or the equal to symbol and then the str uh, function and uh, then value between the parentheses for the for this function as an argument so let's say i want to convert the number 9500 to its corresponding string value and when i press the enter key i don't see any message but then when i type my string and press the enter key, I see that 9500 is now displayed within single quotes. And you know, the uh, fun part of doing this is that if suppose you want to extract individual digits out of a number, right? So out of 9500, let's say you just want to extract the digit five for you know some application that you're making, then you know just, just see how convenient it gets because now I can type in my string and then within square brackets, the index for the second digit, which will be one, right? Because the index of the first digit is obviously zero. When I press the enter key, I just see five, right? So this way I can extract individual digits uh, or, you know, some digits out of the entire number. And uh, the next method that we're gonna check out is the tuple method. And this method is used to convert a string to a tuple, right? So I'll type in uh, tuple and then within parentheses, any string. And uh, I'll just type in this is a string. And when I press the enter key, I see that I get the entire thing with in uh, parentheses, right? So if you guys remember, when we create a tuple, we use parentheses and uh, that's why the entire thing has been closed within parentheses and the space characters are also there as individual elements in the tuple, right? And uh, the next method that we're gonna check out is the list method and this, as you guys might have guessed already, is used to convert a string value to a list, right? So again, I will uh, type in something this will be a list and when I press the enter key, I see all the values being displayed within uh, square brackets because square brackets are used with lists and um, you know, all the characters in the string have basically been converted to individual list elements, right? The next function that we're gonna check out is the chr function and this is my favorite, I use it a lot. And this function is used to obtain the corresponding ASCII value, sorry, the character value of a number you know, you get you get the ASCII uh, character value of an ASCII number, right? So let's say I want to get the, you know, character value for the number 65 in the ASCII table. And if you guys don't know what ASCII values are, then you can Google them up. And ASCII stands for uh, American Standard Code for Information Interchange. And, you know, it's something that all programming languages use, uh, you know, in some way or the other to, you know, obtain um, binary values of uh, character values, right? So H has an ASCII value and the alphabet T has an ASCII value. And then, you know, lowercase alphabets have different ASCII values from uppercase alphabets. And that's how, you know, uh, characters are distinguished, uh, you know, by programming languages. So when I press the enter key now, I see that 
I get A. So the ASCII value corresponding to the number 65 is capital A. And uh, the reverse, to do the reverse of this, you use the ORD function. And this function gives you the you know, number ASCII value of uh, a character. So let's say I want to know the you know, corresponding ASCII value of um, the alphabet small a. When I do that, when I press the enter key, I see 97. So the ASCII value of capital A is 65 and ASCII value of small a is 97, right? And uh, if you want to find out the hex code of a number, then you use the hex function. Let's say I want to find the hex code of 4500. I press the enter key, I see that the hex code is 1194. And then you see zero and X as uh, you know the initial part of the output. And that's because whenever you use the hex function, you know you get these two numbers uh, along with the actual value. And you'll always have these in the beginning. And if you want to find out the octal value of a number, then you use the OCT function. And uh, that's the oct function. And let's uh, put in 4500 again as an argument. So the octal code for this is 10624. And you see 0 and 0 as uh, you know the initial part of the value. And then uh, if you want to find out the binary value of a number, let's say I want to find the binary value of 42. I'll use the BIN function or the, uh, you, you know, it's, it's, it's basically an abbreviation for binary. And uh, when I press the enter key, I see 0B as the initial part of the output. So this means that it's binary value. And then 101010, that's, uh, you know, the binary value for 42. So these are all the functions that I wanted to discuss in this tutorial. And uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to begin our discussions on operators. And I hope you guys are having fun in this course. And I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care.